Hi there, so glad that you have joined us as we are here to talk about our road salt reduction initiative that we've been doing here at Lake George. As we all know, the chloride levels in Lake George have tripled over the past 40 years, but in streams such as this, they increase by 150 times during storm events, and even of greater impact are impacts to our groundwater, where we know now that wells are contaminated. This has all been found through studies funded through the Fund for Lake George, and we're here to talk to you about what three local municipalities and agencies have done to help reduce road salt through the practice of brining, or what we call anti-icing. You'll learn about how these departments and these operators have taken it on themselves to learn about brining, to learn about the science of brining, and to learn how that really has helped the bottom line in economics in their own townships and counties. If you're interested in this subject, we encourage you to speak with these municipalities, learn about it, and learn how you can protect your own communities and protect important resources like we are here doing at Lake George. Years ago, well, what we did was we primarily used sand. It was a year-long process. Dan would go over to our sand pit and he would dig out of the bank and he would take and, and dump that on a screening plant and produce sand. Screen out all the, the rocks and the pebbles, not that you ever get them all out. And he would work on this all summer long. So then when there was a break in time, the other crew members, they'd haul that sand over to our bulk pile. And then what happened from there was when we got actually into winter, we actually used pickups and out to three inches, we would plow roads with pickups and then we would have a separate truck that would, they would dump the sand into the separate truck. We used very little chlorides or salts at that, at that point, just enough, but usually about 10%. And what that would do is that would just basically so the salt didn't freeze, you didn't, it didn't clump. So it would come out the conveyor chain of the truck. And then once we got up above three inches, we, we had another plow truck, a bigger plow truck with a wing, high speed plow, these big curl plows that would come and remove the material. So they would keep round after round after round because we didn't use much de-icers. They would go in and basically just continue doing this until the storm's over or it came to a good friction level. So springtime would happen. So what would happen at that point? The entire crew would go out with specialized equipment, street sweepers, about $5,000 worth of consumables, brooms, blowers, and about a month, month and a half worth of time, and they would go and try to sweep all that sand that they put out. So then, after this, this came, we said, well, there's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be a different way of doing this. So we started looking towards sustainable, um, partnered with the fund. We started looking out towards the Midwest to see what they're doing, because they're years ahead of us, and there's other ways we can do. Started looking into liquid geysers. We couldn't afford machines like this or didn't have the funding for it. So we made our own. The brine thing kind of it interested me and so I just started looking into it and we actually started building our own brine maker down there with a three or four 55 gallon barrels. We had a bunch of plastic 55 gallon drums, an agitator, a garden hose, and we made our own brine maker. So now we had to figure out how we're gonna put it on the road. So we had an old tank with a pump on it that we used to use to water the flowers in the park. So we adapted this so we could put it down on the road. Some basic math, figured it out, and it worked. We just kind of went into it blind and used the science of what we had and, and found that it was working out. We had one tall tail sign that really did work. We had an ice storm years ago, about six years ago. We knew this ice storm was coming, it was gonna be really bad. So we fired up our 55 gallon drum, brine maker and our, and our applicator. We just kept making it and we went round and round and round with these liquid de-icers until the point we actually had to go out with our big trucks. But that was the tall tail sign because we were the only municipality all around us that got hit with this ice storm that school opened that day. I think the brine, when we can apply it, 
works well. It buys us time, depending on the event, whether it's a, a flurry or a, a dusting of snow, we generally don't have to send a plow truck out. You know, some of our roads are different because we have such an elevation range. You know, the higher elevations we may have to plow, but uh, I've seen with my own eyes where we have not had to send a crew out because we pre-treated the roads on a, with a dusting and even a, a slight drizzle. Change is always a little difficult. A new culture is always a little difficult, but I certainly have, have seen a change in people jumping on, on board and trying to understand it. We have uh, Rob Vlopoulos who has taken it to another level as, as far as understanding the IT side of it and how to operate everything. And he's really um, has helped us and, and helped us create enthusiasm and, and a culture up there. Robbie V took a real interest in the program uh, and he has some, some acute uh, computer skills. So he got interested in the program, he started collecting data. Uh, it wasn't too long after he got started in this whole thing, he had a notebook with pictures and notes and everything. He would run his, his software, uh, keeping track of the temperature and all the things they were doing. So he really got a handle on the whole procedure and what it was all about, technically. And that really, really worked out to the benefit of the town. All these are tools in a, in a, a huge toolbox. So it's really picking the right tool for the right job. We like to say we're putting the, the right material in the right place at the right time. Are we having an ice storm? Are we gonna start using a little bit more sand? We need a friction adder. Is, it, is the temperature gonna be way up? Are we gonna be able to anti-ice beforehand? Regular sodium chloride brine will basically take care of up to a quarter of an inch. We may not even need to go out. So if we don't have to go out and we don't have to have all our operators come in and we don't have that, that huge cost of running these trucks, of operators wage of consumables so it's it's a huge savings depending on what job it is so the more brine we can use without wasting it is the best possible answer i i like it i've seen what my own eyes work that sold me we eventually approached 50 percent savings in our salt usage which is a lot i mean we order tons and tons and tons of salt every year so 50 percent was a very noticeable milestone and uh that's the thing that I think got everybody excited. And once we started talking about the, the guys in the uh, DPW started talking with the other DPW guy, oh, we saved 50% on the salt. Well, they go, oh, wait a minute, well, what are you doing? So it really promoted the program and it really took off. As a business owner and seeing the positive impact this has had on the town, we're, we're excited to start using this on our properties. We have Brian on site right now and we're going to start using it for this year. There was a lot of skepticism with the public because they see you out there and in their mind they think you're spreading water and they don't understand that it's not going to freeze. They all thinking that it's going to freeze. What they didn't understand once they did, then they kind of got on board themselves for the most part. As the brine started going down and residents started seeing a change, we did get input. We got a lot of questions and people were very positive that we were taking that initiative to, to reduce salt and, and save the lake and save the taxpayer money. We also invested in computerized application systems. This controls our granular application. This by far will control the application rate better than any operator will. So if we set this say at 150 pounds per lane mile, this, through a ground speed sensor, will constantly adjust to maintain that 150 pounds per lane mile. We also put pre-wet systems on our trucks. All the icers need moisture to start to work. So what we're doing is we're providing that moisture, essentially jump-starting the process. So we have more material on the road, in the right place, and it starts working faster. So what you see here is the, the back of the truck. In some trucks, this one, the material actually exits the rear of the truck. This is the auger train that the granule material actually rides on at a set rate because of our computerized application system. It is set at a gate height. This gate height may change due to what material that we are dispensing out the truck. As the material falls out, it's sprayed with these nozzles here at a, at a particular rate before it falls on the spinner. We do this because as this throws the material out, it actually 
helps eliminate the bounce and scatter. It also jump starts the entire process. So these saddle tanks that are on the side of the truck are actually loaded with liquid de-icer. A combination, either sodium chloride de-icer or a mixture of whatever we decide to put in there to get the job done. Basically all this is is a tank goes through a set of valves and filters and gets pumped out with, with the pump and that pump pushes it right out to, to those nozzles. We decided to use the Henderson system, but you really could do this yourself by just getting a tank, some basic hardware that you can get at the hardware store, $100 pump, and buying you some nozzles online. You could accomplish this yourself. My advice to other highway departments is if they have any questions, they can call us, um, but try it and try it in um, maybe some troubled areas or cold spots where, where you, you're sending a crew out, but you don't really need to because you pre-treated the day before during normal work hours. You know, when we started, our highway superintendent was, was apprehensive. He really was. He was a little bit of a tough sell. Once he started, he ended up, by the time he retired, just spearheading this and really being a leader in this whole thing. I was probably the biggest skeptic of all. Um, the science, the people from the fund, Phil Sexton, everybody, I made them work for it. They convinced me. Once I was convinced, my guys were probably more receptive to it than I was and uh, the proof's there, you just gotta look at it. I said, if you wanna save 50% of your salt expenses, you need to do this, this salt abatement program. And there's a lot of funding out there to assist you with it. You just need to make the commitment to do it and get involved and, and people will step up and help you. If we're able to anti-ice, it usually eliminates a round of these trucks going out. So we eliminated the average man's wage, fuel consumption, uh, consumables like cutting edges. We're no longer putting granular material or liquid material out on the road. It's a huge savings. It could save us over $500 per truck by eliminating that one round. So four to five trucks, we could be looking at a $2,500 savings just by eliminating the round. That's just this aspect of it. Not to mention the pickups that follow these trucks to plow intersections aren't going out for that extra round. The loader that would have had to reload these trucks, that's not running. So we essentially, by eliminating one round, we could save $2,500 to $5,000. Doing that over a season, you're talking huge savings, huge. Now we have this town fund relationship. The town and the fund have done several projects in the town. This partnership is great. A lot of times the fund will put up the funding and the town will put up the manpower and the trucks and whatever it takes to build whatever it is we're doing. It's been very successful uh, and the town's extremely pleased with it and uh, we're very happy to have the fund as partners. Everybody's on board. Everybody, we live here. You know, we don't we want to see a bright future for our children to actually grow up and experience the same things that we did. So we can do little things like this because a lot of things, a lot of little things end up having a big result. I think the program in the beginning was, it was you know, it was an unknown. Brining is a situation where some states use it and some states don't use it. And our guys would sit back and, and you know, they were wanting to do the right thing for the town. They understood that the way they were doing it wasn't as beneficial for the environment and the lake. So they listened closely to what the village was doing down there. They listened to Phil and his program and they grasped the importance and, and how it could help the residents of town make it better for the lake, which is again the economic driving force for this whole region. They grasp it, took the ball and ran, and now people are coming to us and say, hey, can you hand us off some information? We started off with these live edges first, and they wanted to control the amount of salt reduction that we were gonna to use to make our roads more safe and more operable for the driver, the community, and saving the environment. We got out, we got a chance to run this equipment to see how it worked. We played with it for two years. 
We couldn't believe the difference in between a straight edge plow versus a plow that actually moves and flexes with the road. It took us a while to understand the breakdown of how the salt reduction actually worked with the way it was melting the material off the, the road and we we're trying to prevent that bond layer. Once we understood the saturation levels of the salt and understanding how to prevent that bond layer, we were able to reduce our numbers by playing with the system, basically. We were learning how it actually works. Once we started understanding how it all breaks down and how it all comes to an effect and started understanding the numbers and the saturation levels and the road temperatures and air temperatures, we started getting into making our own brine so we can reduce our numbers again. Everything's a numbers game for safety. It's about driver safety, the public safety, and everything else that's involved with it along with the environment. Once we understood how to mix the brine at a different capacity, so to speak, to slow it down just a little bit and use the circulators better, we were able to fill up four other tanks in a day. So we had 18,000 gallons of brine made in two days. You start charging the numbers that they were running, which they're gonna eventually switch to because transportation costs a lot of money to move this stuff back and forth. You're probably looking at $1.25 a gallon. One tank we made for $244. And we're doing it on hour, and it's all fitting into what we do for this operation. So within two days, for every tank, you save $4,000 for the town, for your community, and the taxpayers, which is very important. It's a combination of, of being proactive and not waiting till the storm is and go, well, what do we do now? When we see the storm coming, the guys take the steps to go out and brine the road so it, it makes it not as difficult to clean the road as it does in the past when you don't have it down. So, you know, in the past when we were using more salt, the storm would come and they would go over and start plowing, they'd load up some more salt, they'd come back, drop more salt. And it was a never ending battle of trying to come up with the right mixture to keep the road safe for people because, again, we didn't have the expertise and the equipment to be able to monitor the salt, to have salt reduction, to keep the salt out of the lake with the live edge plow, the controls in the trucks based on dispersing the salt based on the speed of the truck. The trucks don't have to go fast. At a slow pace, they get the proper amount of salt on so you're not overloading the road, you're not overloading the environment, hence you're not hurting the lake. This here is our sand pile. With the amount of saving that goes into it and the saving of the basin, the brooks, and the streams, we haven't used sand in three years. That three year savings comes out to $10,000 looking at the numbers of putting it into your truck, springtime cleanup, buying brushes for your payloader to keep your streets clean. We haven't cleaned our streets in two years. We didn't have to because there was no excessive waste left on the road and it stopped the ice pack and when the storm is over, we're finished. We just go out for a patrol, check it, check our cold spots, check our icy spots to make sure the roads are still safe and bare for everybody to continue operating. This is probably 50% of all your problems with ice pack, if not a full 100%. And this is the part that people need to understand. All because of saturation, it absorbs it, it freezes, it doesn't allow the salt to do what it's supposed to do and create more work, twice the amount of salt. You know, they saw how it benefited the town roads, it benefited the safety of the town, it helped keep the lake at a level that we want to keep it at with less salt. So they took the initiative to do all of those steps and go forward with it. And we're real pleased with uh, the leadership out there that they've exhibited working with the crews and for the people of the town are pleased also. It's working. I don't, I kind of get excited talking about it because it's, it's, all, it's all coming together. If you take the time to learn it, and it's really, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. It's, it's a simple process. We were fortunate enough to grasp it. It was a challenge in some aspects. It was trial and error in the others. Once we started seeing the difference in the numbers and seeing how it was actually working, it pressed us to move further. It pressed us to use more. We have three tracking systems on our trucks now. We have cameras that are set up out of the side of the road thanks to the VIA system and Rakib. When the snow comes and we're waiting for that phone call, I jump onto Rakib's dashboard system here and I'm able to see the lines in the road, the material working. So we know that that bond layer is already being prevented. What we found with this pre-wet system is once that bond layer is prevented, you go out, you can minimize the amount of salt that you can use at your startup, and for the leftover material that doesn't break down, that you're just scraping right off the road. It's, it's incredible. 
we have a driver who is, I don't believe in it, and you just put the salt, the salt, the salt to it. We we'll actually ran our numbers up one year. After we did the totals of all of our trucks and ran through all the numbers, we calculated that extra effort to being towards that one truck running at such a high rate. The second he got into the newer truck and started working the Dickie John system, he was like, I can't believe the amount of salt I was wasting. So once they get in it and they start using it and they start seeing the difference, along with the live edge plows, along with the data information that we got collected here, their mindset starts changing. But then they start playing with the numbers. They start going up and they start going down. And then they start learning on the, how they're going to operate on concentrated areas. They know their cold spots. They know where they're going to get excessive snow falling off the tree from leftover snow that's coming. And then you can tweak those efforts and make them more efficient. When it comes to the end of a storm, we're pretty much done. We could run out and run a pre-wet line over it if we wanted to, as opposed to doubling the amount of lane miles that we need to help clean up the roads and melt them faster. If you're willing to have a drive or a determination, you could achieve certain things. And this is something that we're, we're achieving. It's really simple. It's not as complicated as everybody thinks. And I think the fear is change. And to change, you have to show them what you've achieved. You have to show them your failure and your success. And uh, that's what we've been doing. We've already been going town to town. Our guys grasped the uh, program ran with it and again it made it better and now we found towns are coming and asking our guys for help so sharing this knowledge and how it benefits the residents of whatever town it could be and is paramount and it, again it helps protect our beautiful lake if you bring it forth to them and explain it to them and try to get them involved you have to say something that's going to make them turn their heads uh, you have to make them stop think and look at our results compared to what they're doing now the only way you can prove that is with facts and data. We have all that. We're taking these charts that we've created from this program, from the SWIM team and other teams, and we're making up our own charts, and we're, we're implementing this all into a daily function. It's not only just about snow and ice. It goes into their daily routine of how we're going to run our operations. That's how much this program has changed us. Once people look at this, ask questions, and understand it, they'll ask more questions. Can it be beneficial for our town? How much money can we save by doing it this way? How much can we improve the quality of the lake? Can we reduce the salt content into the lake to make it a lake that is more viable and will continue to be viable for a long time? We're gonna take it to the next step this year. Now that we've understand the numbers, saturation levels, and temperatures, we're gonna tie in our pre-wet system, which is gonna allow us to run at more efficient numbers. And it's all about understanding that science. And it's really simple once it's laid forth for you. We're just, we're just trying to find another way to become more innovative to make it more operational and more safe. I got a drive in me. I want to help save the lake. I want to help save the environment. I want to help keep people safe. Those, those, are, those are our goals. We got involved as a town to try and preserve the lake. There are various programs now to try and keep the lake clean. And we do understand that salt loading is a detriment to the lake. And of course, with the guys that they're growing up here, most of them, they understand that also. And steps were taken with the help from the Fund of Lake George and other organizations to try and continue to keep the lake pristine. And we believe the guys have worked hard on that. And of course, they have been the recipient of the SWIM Award, and we're awful proud of that. The highway department oversees 250 miles worth of roads and 57 miles worth of bridges. That's to do paving maintenance in the summer months and then in the winter months it's to do snow and ice removal. We have in the past couple of years taken on kind of new protocols that we haven't done in the past. Normally it was just for us to, to put salt on roadways, uh, maintain bare roads within Warren County. And that's kind of a policy that was put in place many years before I ever started here. If you put down salt on the road when it was clear, high traffic area, unless it was just before the storm came down and hit, uh, obviously it would bounce off the road and it would clear it off just traffic flying. So it was, I want to say, a very inefficient pre-treating system. With a brine system down, you have a security there. If it's been in place, that you know that you actually have an application down and that gives you a little more time in that window getting trucks out to take care of the storm, the snow and ice activity. One of our northernmost towns in the county, the town of Johnsburg, 
we had our crews put brine up there last year and typically that's the spot in Warren County where the snow comes in first. Uh, the lake effect snow comes across and those guys took our brine last year and used it on a couple different roads in Johnsburg. And we noticed that normally they were putting down about 400 pounds per lane mile uh, of salt on those roads. Uh, they reduced it last year either 200 or below 200 by the use of, of putting the brine application down first. It's the fact that you can get out ahead of a snow and ice event and have it pre-treated on the road so that gives you a little more of a cushion as far as a reaction time and that first application doesn't have to be that heavy. That's the big thing as far as pre-treatment goes. You don't have to lay down so much salt in a storm you may not have to put any down. If the brine does its job on a smaller event, you may not have to send any, have anybody actually go out and take care of a, a, an event as far as the snow goes. Everybody thought we did a good job by reducing salt, but we definitely know there's areas out there that we can reduce it more. We do know that there's you know little things that we can tweak on and get the operators and stuff on board with us a little more and you're gonna see a big difference. That's the big thing, you gotta get the operators to believe in it, once you get the belief, you know, then we'll start reducing salt at a good rate. I think the fund has provided the county with a, a lot of kind of the, the information needed for us necessarily to get started. They also helped us this past year with our first stationary brine making unit. They were able to fund it uh, in its entirety for the county and we uh, received it back in September and we've already filled up all our brine tanks for this year. So that was a huge help on their part. And we're on board with, it's not just the fund, it's all the environmental groups around the lake. We're not opposed to making sure that this lake is around for a very long time. We've also had a partnership with WIP and with Rakib. They have assisted us with, number one, their knowledge, and that's been a huge help. Uh, they, I've, I've also kind of given them leeway to talk with our staff because sometimes coming from me, it may not be, hey, this is the right, right thing to do, but let somebody else tell them saying we, we've done this. So that's that's been a huge help. They've also provided us some infrastructure in place as well for this. We've gotten cameras. Uh, we have cameras on, I believe five or six roads now, uh, hoping to get a couple more for this year. The cameras did allow them, compared to past practice, was the only way to check on the road was to get up and actually physically check on the road was past practice. Uh, nowadays, like I said, with the cameras and if you have the pre-treatment down, it, it physically you can see where it's it's being effective. That's a plus for my staff because when they get up in the mornings, they can know that we're gonna have snow coming in the night before. They can look at the camera and say, mm, there's nothing on our roads. And especially if we use Brian on all our roads, and I'm hoping with the data that we collect this year, it'll really show everyone else that it, that it truly does work. Uh, that it's truly the model that everybody should be following. Uh, we're not the only state to try this. Uh, there's, there's many, many areas, even DOT, New York State DOT uses brine now. They realize the benefits as well. Uh, but, but again, as I've, I've, I've always said, it, it's tough to convince smaller town guys have been plowing for years that this truly does work. But uh, yeah, my, my big dream this year is going to get projected on everyone else going forward from here. We have such a beautiful area that we live in and we know that salt has done damage to the lake and it's not just Lake George. I'm sure if you can go to any one of the other lakes, it's done the same thing there. To me, it's to make sure that that stays the pristine beauty it is forever and ever.